All right, class, welcome to lecture eight. Uh, just a friendly reminder that it is important not only that you write down the words that are going to be on the screen, but also you write down what I'm talking about. It is just as important, if not more important, that, that you write down and you understand what I am talking about, not just uh, what is on the screen. So again, this is uh, lecture eight, the beginnings of industrialization. Now, the Industrial Revolution, the, the change in, in how industry was produced and how people were living, all started in England, the country of England. Now, why England? There's a couple of uh, important reasons. First, we had the agro agricultural changes. Where did those come from? If you remember a couple units back, we talked about the Enlightenment and the scientific revolution, advances in medicine, those types of things. Well, the scientific revolution spurred on changes in all uh, parts of society. And one of those ways was in, in agriculture. It, it started getting people who were in agriculture, farming, uh, raising livestock, those types of things, to think about how can we do things in a more efficient and a better way. And, and so the agricultural revolution happened. And there's a couple main things that uh, uh, happen. First, you have crop rotation um, and enclosure. S enclosures uh, were, were created. So crop rotation, the main problem with uh, with farming is that you are going to lose you know the soil that you plant the uh, crop in it loses nutrients and without nutrients the soil becomes useless and that you're not going to get a good return on your crop so somebody came up with the idea that we must change the crop every year uh, so one the first year we'll have like a corn or something that grows above ground harvest it the next year we want to replenish the nutrients that just came out so you put a a root crop like a potato or a squash or a pumpkin or, or one of those types of um not pumpkin but a, a potato like a uh, crop that grows in the ground uh, a carrot that replenishes the nutrients and then you can plant the next year uh, something that grows out and that way uh, you will you know, the the ground that you are using will never lose its nutrients. Enclosures are where basically you build a fence around your property and this is important be when you're talking about uh, raising livestock whether it's uh, cows, uh, horse, sheep, you don't need ho horse but cows and sheep and pigs those types of things when you have a fence around obviously they're not going to be a runaway so you can grow uh, you can raise a, a many more of those types of things uh, and in turn sell them because of uh, many of these in, uh, advancements uh, you have less workers needed uh, to work the farm if you have less people out of work on, on the, the on the farm they're available now to go somewhere where do people go to find work now they have to go to the cities uh, to find work in the factories in addition, these advancements in uh, agriculture allowed farmers to produce better food. What happens when better food is produced? People are healthier, uh, they're living longer, and your population grows. They're able to reproduce. But the most important reason why England was the beginning or the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution was it had the factors of production. Now, if you remember from your vocab on Monday, your pr uh, factors of production were our resources needed to produce goods and services. And England had all of these. And when you're talking about factors of production, you're talking about three main things. You're talking about land, whether it's uh, actual uh, land or rivers or natural resources, things that come from the land, whether it's labor or, or workforce. And the final uh, or third thing is capital. And what is capital? It's not like the capital city of Sacramento. That is not what we're talking about here. Rather, the capital, uh, what we're talking about in factors of production, is money. Skrilla, cha-ching, whatever you want to call it. Capital is money. You have to have money. If you don't have money, nothing is going to get built. There is no there is no way to finance things. So England had all of these factors of production. We're going to get to labor in, in a the next couple days uh, we're only going to focus on land and capital so natural resources England had a bunch of them first uh, the water and coals they had a, a coal they had abundance uh, rivers streams those types of things and in, 
uh, what that was used for was powering the the mills uh, the factories a at first also coal was they they had a bunch of coal uh, down beneath their their ground uh, and that was brought up that was mined to produce um, energy without the that coal many of the factories would not have uh, the right amount of energy uh, to be used uh, rivers were also very important because they were the early forms of transportation so when uh, a textile was created uh, in a factory they would put it on a, a ship that was in the river the ship would travel downstream and they would take it to uh, the marketplace where people were to buy those types of things harbors are also important for shipping goods it was because uh, because there were many harbors, it allowed for boats to come in and out easily, and, and there was no problem transporting before uh, railroads became uh, more became well, before excuse me before railroads actually were were invented. The next thing we talked about, we're going to skip labor and we're going to go to stable economy and banks. Uh, England at this time was hugely. Um, prop prosperous and more importantly hugely uh, peaceful especially after uh, Napoleon's little debacle remember uh, after Napoleon we had about a hundred years of peace and England was uh, enjoying that because there was so much peace the economy was booming not only uh, or not only but the reason the economy was booming was because the government of England wanted um, and passed laws or favorable legislation that allowed uh, businesses to invest in uh, factories and those types of things so it allowed the government uh, not the government the economy to grow not only that but there were new inventions in the textile industry and you see a bunch of uh, four pictures actually of uh, different textile machines now when, when you hear that word textile what does that mean it's not a tile that that you see on your kitchen floor or your bathroom floor we're not talking about tiles here textiles simply means clothes clothing blankets those types of things those are what textiles and that was really um, what the industrial revolution started around were factories that produced textiles or, or clothing uh, inventions like uh, the spinning jenny um, or different hand make or different textile making uh, instruments were uh, initially they were created by hand they were created by hand in the home um, so if you see on the top right hand uh, corner of that picture right there someone is operating that by hand um, and eventually you had people moving away from um, operating by hand and inventions were created uh, that were bigger and more powerful and they were operated by energy um, whether it's coal water whatever it is uh, that's how it was created and it took weaving out of the house um, and into the factories you had these huge machines like the bottom right where right now you couldn't fit that in somebody's house rather they took it out of the house and they put it into a factory and they had uh, somebody just operate it, uh, make sure it's working, that sort of thing, uh, instead of actually making the textile like you, you have in that top right-hand corner. So these new inventions, uh, like the spinning jenny, um, water frame, those types of things, were all very important in this industrialization where, where the um, place where textiles were created went from the home where when it was handmade objects to the um, factories.